I don't either. So intermittent fasting. Cool topic. So I know you 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 love Walter Longo. You say it so well. You <laughs> gave me his book, and I have bought lots of boxes of Prolon from you. Sometimes I hate it. Sometimes I hate it. Yeah, but right. uh, I do it. Let's talk about intermittent fasting because I have uh, lots of people that I know on it. Right. Um, I have friends who do 24 hours right. of fasting twice a week. I have friends who do five days a week, eight hour periods of eating. I've been experimenting with that for the last two weeks. I eat from noon to 8 p.m. and nothing outside of that. Now, I don't know how many calories I'm supposed to have in that eight hours. Um, so I'd like to talk about that. You know, your the Prolon diet is five days of about 700 calories a day that puts you into ketosis for those five days. And you say that's really good. And it set, resets all of your um, organs in your, in your brain and your blood and all good things come from that. Um, so what, what are the best practices when it comes to intermittent fasting these days? Yeah, uh, great question. A lot of science, uh, a lot of experience on my part. I lecture on this topic around the country. So it, it reflects two things. One, there's, there's too much food for everybody, and there's obesity all over the United States, part of which is too many calories, part of which is we live in the dirtiest toxic time in our world between water, air, chemicals, plastics, all kinds of things. Don't drink out of plastic bottles anymore, Mike. Uh, it's terrible stuff. Get yourself a water filter. <laughs> Another system. note. <laughs> Get yourself a glass bottle of stainless steel. Need some new uh, water in yeah. here, please. Uh, I do intermittent, I mean, water dehydration rather than drink out of plastic bottles. I mean, the city of Birmingham is lead in their tap water. You need you need water filter systems in your home and in your office now. It's it's a it's a shame, but it's true. So let's go back. We have a need because we're 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 fighting obesity and we need a solution. And it turns out one solution is eat less. That's pretty obvious. But if you can structure it. Number two, some people want to live better without disease, without medication. And any animal you fast, any animal model, you restrict their calories, you drop their calories. They live longer. It's, that's Dr. Longo and many other scientists work. You want a better brain? You eat less in an animal model. You want a thinner body with better hair? You eat less in an animal model. Does that translate to humans? We think so. And that's what's driving this, you know, this new wave of anti-aging medicine, which is real and authentic and will really allow us to reach Kevin's grandparents' age more predictably. I have no doubt we'll, we'll be able to, you know, we're, we're all young enough around the table, we're gonna see the benefits. We're five years away from the first drug proven to maybe promote the chance of lowering your risk of cancer and prolonging your life. Uh, and it's always gonna be lifestyle more than drugs, but everybody wants the drug. It might be metformin, might be something called rapamycin, might be, a field called senolytics. In the meantime, I, I'll give you an example. I was listening to a podcast two weeks ago, the head of the National Institutes of Health Brain Aging Section, an MD of world renown, textbooks, papers, asked on uh, the podcast, what the heck do you do for your lifestyle? How many supplements do you take? Vitamins? None. Okay, so what do you do? I exercise and I fast because those are the only two things proven to potentially, you know, prolong your life. And um, hence, fasting has those two impetuses deal with weight and potentially promote long-term health and avoidance of disease. So there's a whole bunch of, the simplest thing to do is sort of what you mentioned. It's actually called TRE, time-restricted eating. 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day, shut your mouth. You know, drink water, shut your mouth. Drink black coffee, drink herbal tea, drink filtered water, but shut your mouth. And that could be, uh, you know, I will very commonly do 8 p.m. to 10 a.m. That's about 14 hours, but I will stretch it a little longer. It's very simple to adopt. A, a brittle diabetic should be careful and probably not do it. And there is some studies that suggest it promotes a better weight. It's what you said. It gives your body 12 hours to rebuild damaged DNA, to build up antioxidant stores. Um, there's fairly sound science. This isn't woo. This is real. Dr. Longo, University of Southern California, kind of the leading longevity expert, would tell you 12 to 14 hours is enough. Now, there are other experts, a guy named Dr. Panda, that talks about 17, 18 hours. Mm. Um, that's not so undoable if you don't really need breakfast. It's really you skipping eat, breakfast. You eat lunch and dinner. And it avoids and the late night window. snacking. Right. And really, sure, you should eat healthy, but you don't have to count calories. You don't have to count calories. You automatically eat less because it's a few hours. Yeah, it, right? it's And you're certain, full. And, then once you fasted, and if it's 200 first, calories a day less, that's a lot over the course of a year. And it's right. not so socially unacceptable. I mean, you don't have no. too many powered breakfast meetings. Coffee's on the table, fine. Filter sure. water's on the table. Green teas, you know, herbal teas are all good. 
There's a fair amount of science. There is something called alternate day fasting, ADF. That takes discipline. I mean, one day you eat nothing, the next day you're unlimited one day. People lose weight. People will get, they lower their blood sugar if it's abnormal. They lower their inflammation. But that happens with these other programs. So I did that um, the last time I lost yeah. weight. Because uh, like I said, I, I literally look at my scale and I'll do what I need to get to a certain number. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I did that, but I did it. I want to say twice a month, I, I just completely skipped a day and went into the next day. And I would go 35 hours, 40 hours without eating. And the weight like really drops off fast. Yeah. Well, we need to develop and we'll make millions. It's something that literally locks down the kitchen at about 8 p.m. <laughs> by Bluetooth. The by, prison diet. By, you know, life <laughs> lock. Or, kosher. We could do a kosher Absolutely. Diet. Because, you know, late night eating, you know, number one, a lot of people eat four, five, 600 calories from 8 o'clock on, whether they're chips or guac or popcorn, skinny popcorn or... Yeah. You know, all kinds of other abysmal things. It really stresses your body out. It ages you. It promotes diabetes. It promotes brain aging. You know, just we got to stop doing it. So is it mostly for losing weight or does it help with heart health? They're they're one and the same. When you, you will probably lose some weight. When you lose weight, you actually help your brain. Big people have smaller brains. Big people have more Alzheimer's down the road. That's a scientific fact in 50 studies. Uh, big people have more di It's not anti-big people, but big people have more diabetes. We know that big people well, have more back pain. and It's the whole thing. Well, but you will probably lower your LDL cholesterol, your triglycerides. You'll probably bring your blood sugar down. Um, some people combine keto diet and intermittent fasting, plant-based keto with, um, you know, uh, 14, 15 hours a day of eating. That's probably in today's crazy society where we just, you know, we have buffets everywhere, and you know we have abundant calories. In 2011, for the first time in the United States, more people were suffering diseases of calorie excess than calorie deficiency. Yes, there are clearly and sadly still kids that don't get enough calories a day, but more people and more people you know, they're all struggling with their, with their tire right, around their right. waist, and that is a lethal tire around the waist. Welcome right. back, the McRib. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, you know, drive, as I say, man, I, I drive through places for coffee and bathrooms, and that's... All you should do, and for breakfast, just skip them. You know. Is there any healthy fast food? Um, tough one. You know, you could say it's interesting to have the Impossible Burger at Burger King. I, I wouldn't call it healthy. Um, I'd call it on par with You know, the they put burger. mayo on it. I know. You know, <laughs> you know my, my peers, I haven't had one yet. I'm not anti that. Uh, we have the Beyond Meat Burger at Green Space Cafe. But um, I sure don't eat a lot of them. And they apparently will grill it on a separate grill without mayonnaise and cheese if you tell them you're plant-based. I haven't had the joy of experiencing that yet. Um, uh, is there any healthy fast food in a standard? I mean, the, it used to be baked potato at Wendy's. I ate so many about, plain baked potatoes at Wendy's. Egg, they all have eggs now, though. What about like an egg McMuffin or something? He doesn't like, like that. eggs. That's yeah. not the well, we, we, we don't we don't, what, uh, we don't talk eggs. Yeah. <laughs> what about the bean burrito at Taco Bell? Yeah, that uh, you know, other than the salt, that's uh, been a go-to. Taco Bell is a pretty uh, plant-based, friendly place. You know, you say healthy. There is a franchise out of L.A. It's not a franchise. It's soon to be a franchise. It's called Veggie Grill. There's probably 20 of them in L.A. They just opened at Harvard Square in Boston this weekend, and there'll be there's six of them in Chicago. There's five of them in D.C. They're coming to Detroit. They're as good as it gets for plant-based, faster food. But, you know, there's a zillion unhealthy vegans eating vegan, malt vegan milkshakes, vegan fries, vegan burgers. I mean, don't – if you want to transition off of animals for the, the – sake of the world and the animals go there right. that's, that's a good point. pretty quick just because you're quick. vegan doesn't that mean gets you're back be to skinny. junk and clean and yeah. i mean clean eating hashtag clean eating is the most important message and that's called a broccoli that's called a salad that's called a cucumber that's called an apple uh you know and um yep, learn some people also foods. call that boring yeah. <laughs> and well, i think kevin might be yeah. in that category um, i'm not i i'm, I'm yeah. it can be really interesting you know the range of brightly colored fruits and vegetables grains and beans can you know keep you going for your whole life and the great chefs out there the great chefs in paris are you need a good chef yeah the problem is 
cooking vegan it's at tough. home it's is tough. tough. Yeah. Going to restaurants like yours and others, and, and I love going to other cities and, and yeah. experiencing great restaurants, right. and I've texted you some of their menus, and that's fun, but really doing yeah. this at home is difficult. Yeah, so, you know, people, and I don't have financial interest in any of these, but purplecarrot.com, people order the box. Well, there's a Tom Brady 12 line that's all plant-based. So you have fun with your family for half an hour making something creative. You can't do that every meal, every day. It's too expensive, but it might give you some insight. There's some uh, companies you can order a few meals from ready to go so you do nothing. Sprinly.com, mamasays.com, sakara.com. Again, it exposes people. And I often tell my patients, you know, you're not ready to do gourmet vegan cooking at your house. Do this for a couple weeks. I'm not telling you to do it forever. It's expensive. You know, some people, and I've referred people to a chef for a few months, get them going. Um, you know, one thing it can I, be as simple though is you know can you bake a baked potato and a sweet potato? Maybe find out some purple potatoes. Can you know learn how to make a whole wheat pasta with marinara and a boatload of kale, spinach, garlic, onion? I mean, these things are tasty. These are simple right. skills. You're gonna start chopping mirepoix. You know, you're out of there. You're bored. Right. And Does you your diet impact uh, depression at all? Or? Yeah, yeah. Plants, plants power happiness. There's uh, good data. You know. For a lot of people like that, you know, just one meal a day going a little greener. I learned how to make a green smoothie in the in the morning or lunch. Some people do it for lunch. You know, ha- if you put a handful of spinach in a blender, but you put a handful of blueberries, it looks purple, tastes purple, looks blue, <laughs> ton of flaxseed, ton of like almond milk, or I'm a big fan lately of oat milk. Me too. Milk. Love yeah. oat milk. Oat milk. Oat leaf Love. from Sweden, yep. man. They make, That's uh, the bomb. you want a com. latte with oat, oat milk. milk. It's, uh, it, yeah. you can't tell the I'm difference. done with almond milk, Joel. Yeah. And I think oat milk's an upgrade. <laughs> what about soy? Yeah, soy's good. Soy got beat up by a group called the Weston Price Foundation that 20 years ago, pretty mat- meat-eating uh, anthropology group that spread the word that soy grows man boobs and soy, you know, prevents erections. It turns out there's a there's a variety of chemicals. This is science. Science communities that eat soy, Japanese communities particularly, have incredible health traditionally and long life. Um, that's epidemiology. There are randomized studies: soy lowers your cholesterol, soy lowers inflammation. But the word got out that there is estrogen in soy, and it makes men into women, and it makes women into cancer. It turns out there's there's estrogen in the meat you're eating, and the chicken in you're eating, and the turkey you're eating because they're injecting them, and there's estrogen all through your milk unless you're buying organic milk. And that's real estrogen. That's high-powered estrogen straight from an animal with a similar chemical structure to our own estrogen. These plant estrogens are weak little wimps, and they actually will block the estrogen in your body or the estrogen in your diet from getting to the estrogen receptor. So there's no doubt it's been shown, and I would never quote this, uh, if, you've, if you want to avoid breast cancer, you eat some soy foods, edamame, tempeh, maybe a little tofu in a scramble. And if you uh, have had breast cancer, it's either neutral or an advantage to have some soy in your diet. All right. I got in a fight so, with one of my daughters about that the other day. So I'm telling yeah, her you so can eat soy. So the Impossible Burger is soy-based you know, protein substitute, where the Beyond Burger is a pea protein. But um, it's not my favorite choice for a lot of reasons. I like the Beyond Meat a little better, and I don't like it too often. Um, but I would tell anybody, compared to the beef you're getting at McDonald's or Wendy's, Hardee's, it's a big upgrade in your health. The problem with the Impossible Burger or the Beyond Burger is you think you're ordering healthy. You think it's a diet meal, but it comes on white bread. Yeah. It usually comes with a side of French fries. <laughs> right. uh, and with a Coke, with a Coke. With yeah, a, if you I just mean, pull out the little I've patty, walked out of, okay. I've walked out of some bars. I go to a bar in Royal Oak, um, Al Mary's, right. that has a lovely vegan menu. Right. But sometimes I walk out of there feeling really full and kind of gross after eating a vegan meal. Yeah. And I and it's obviously, and, and like you said, not all vegans are skinny yeah. uh, and healthy. Yeah, uh, the owner of that place is one of the smartest restaurateurs in town. And I uh, love the His tequila is amazing, too. I love, but, I go all the time. I'm yeah. still going. I just, I'm saying that yeah. just because you eat the Beyond Burger or the Impossible Burger doesn't mean. It's, it's no guarantee. I don't know even if I'm losing calories on that day. No, Probably right, not. Do it, do it, uh, treat yourself once in a while, not too often.
exercise. Yeah. So you and I talk a lot about exercise, but I'm coming to see you in your office. Um, you know, there's lots of 20 minute diet, 20 minute exercise programs out there. Our programs, I've tried orange theory lately and they're telling you, you got to get, get your heart rate up into this orange zone for get 12 some, minutes, get some splats, get uh, some splat yeah. points. What's, uh, what's, What's the best practice out there right now? How many minutes a day or a week should you have your heart rate over your 80 to yeah. 83%? Yeah, the good news about, well, I'd say it's similar to talking about diet. One apple a day in your diet is an upgrade and uh, one salad a day in your diet is an upgrade. You know, the American Heart Association is 22 minutes a day of exercise. So you wanna do an hour, you, you wanna take two and a half hours to get ready for the gym, go drive to the gym, do a whole gym scene. Um, any exercise you do, from standing at your desk to walk into the hall to parking further to climbing stairs, um, natural movement, that's what's called the blue zones kind of concept, that these longevity areas in the world that are like Kevin's grandparents, three of the four of them. Um, you know, nobody's going to a gym. They're, they're doing natural things. All that's undone. So I'm really big into, you know, so called hacking exercise, high intensity protocols, three, four times a week. The hit, the hit, the hit, you know, the Tabata protocol that CrossFit made famous. If you're of good back and hips and joints and all, you know, doing something really hard on an elliptical treadmill bike for 30, 45 seconds back and off for 20, really hard, um, is very time efficient. And you get the same benefit in terms of your cholesterol, your blood sugar, your weight, and some of your training as you do on a rather boring 30, 40 minutes on an elliptical. You see everybody kind of just uh, watching TV on. You got to work hard. There's a cool new bike besides the CrossFit called the Carol bike, no financial ties. It's an eight minute workout. It's expensive to get at home, kind of like the cost of a Peloton. But um, it's only about a minute of hyper intense exercise and they've got independent research. So our body responds real well to short, intense exercise. If you just use a jump rope? Yeah, I, you could, a jump rope, it would be an awesome workout. It's a whole body workout. You could do like really hard for a minute, back off and catch your breath and really hard or just do really hard for a while. Um, you know, so um, I, would, I would try really hard not to hurt yourself. I think that's the biggest mistake, getting a trainer, you're not ready, being pushed. Next thing you know, your back's out and you're not working out for two, three months. That's a mistake. All your trainers out there listening, don't hurt people. Um, you know, or make sure your client understands. And, you know, do something almost every day and make no excuse if it's 15 minutes in a hotel gym. If you're dropping on the floor and doing 50 push-ups, if you're doing, you know, 25 sit-ups, um, do something. And I do a whole crazy routine of some weights and some cardio um, I've got these vibrational whole body plates called power plate. I love, I love kind of weird, uh, exercise, um, yeah, and natural walking whenever you can. Anytime you can be out in nature getting exercise, it's a bonus, um, uh, fresh air, you know, uh, it's good stuff. Blood pressure medicine, should you take it in the morning or evening? Evening, evening. This was a powerful new study, a brand new science. I just read it, tell me. Yeah, we've talked about this uh, in the medical world for about two, three years, that uh, potentially uh, chronotherapy, using timing of medication, as well as timing of eating and diet, uh, may change the response. But this new 19,000 patient study that was as good as it gets uh, out of Europe, that you know half the group took all their blood pressure medicine in the morning, whether it was one pill or three pills, the other group took all their medicine at night, and they made them, it was in Spain, now that I think of it, they made them wear every six months a 48-hour blood pressure cuff that measures your blood pressure mm -hmm. continuously. And they showed definitively that, one, blood pressure responded better at night by taking your medicine at night, but it also responded, responded better during the day, which was a surprise. And number two, the important stuff, heart attack, strokes, um, hospitalizations went down by as much as 50% by just flipping your medicine tonight. So talk to your doc. <clears throat> Sometimes, like my mother's on three pills at three different times, it's actually a little complex. Do I want to upset her apple cart at age 87 and put all her medicine at night? So I don't think it's become an absolute hard and fast rule. But if you're taking one or two pills in the morning, flip them tonight. So just the, just the blood pressure, not a statin? Statins, generally, we've advised people to take at night when uh, they were kind of the older ones that we still use, probostatin, uh, lovastatin. Uh, things like Crestor doesn't much matter, but you might as well, we make more cholesterol at night than we make during the day. It's one of those 
I'm getting sleep, I'm rebuilding my necessary ingredient steps. So you get a little more advantage taking your statin at night for most of them.
My girlfriend is nervous about Bernie Sanders and his heart yeah. attack. What, what is your take on that? Um, you know, by age 78, uh, surprising that he had silent heart disease probably for decades. We could have picked it up when he was 58 with a $100 CAT scan, although 20 years ago it was a $1,000 CAT scan. Price <laughs> has come down. It was available 20 years ago. Um, and I'll just give a shout out. Anybody wants to learn more about the heart scan, there's a movie on the Netflix called The Widowmaker Movie. And it's just a cool movie describing why you need one of those heart CT scans so you don't die. Kevin's, um, Kevin's getting one before we do our next podcast. Know. You know, right. Bernie should be fine. I mean, the way we treat emergencies, and he was one. I've got ongoing symptoms. My enzymes are elevated. I'm having a mini heart attack. Boom, boom, cath lab stent medication. That becomes a very low risk situation. When you go back 30 years, how we deal dealt with that, you know, you were 30% likely to die. He's going to be fine. Have you have you read articles about him since he's had his heart attack? Like, did he not know he had heart disease? Yeah, he, he missed the symptoms like Bob Harper, the famous trainer from The Biggest Loser, missed the symptoms. It's so easy. You know, you're not you're busy. He was plenty busy. I got Harper and I'm just tired. I'm pushing too hard. But by the time it builds up as you know, like a burning elephant on your chest, I mean, at some point, and you can't breathe. Right. But that's, that's you're having a heart attack. He didn't have, I believe, no, they have, you know, the big heart attack that you really like Dwight, David Eisen, the President right. Eisenhower had in the 50s. Sounds, he just had the blood tests went up, and officially you have to call it a heart attack. Sounds like Bernie needs to come to see you. Bernie needs to come to see right, me. Let's get Bernie in here next he time he's here in last town. Sunday. He was we here should, Sunday. We should have introduced him. him. Bernie needs to eat it. Sweet right. green. My timing's he better than Bernie, yeah. so yes. I get the benefit. Bernie, right. we'll have to catch him next time. You're catching it 24 years <laughs> early. So here's the deal. I have literally 100 more questions. We're not going to get to okay. them all today. Kevin, go get your CAT scan. We're going to do that. Next time we have Dr. Khan on, we're going to go through the results if you're, if you're open to it. If I'm still here, they may put me in immediately. They right, they might, right. They might we may have to do it in the intensive <laughs> right. care unit. Yeah. You guys right. have to come see but, me. But, Bring. <laughs> you know, I'm concerned now, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, I'm concerned. Um, but Dr. Khan, thank you for coming in. A pleasure. This was awesome. so fun. I learned a lot. 